Whether you are a front-end developer spinning up a React app or a back-end engineer building and testing APIs, localhost is where it all starts. You hit that npm run dev and boom, your browser pops open with HTTP localhost 3000. But what exactly is going on under the hood? In this video, we are about to take a deep dive into a piece of networking magic that you use every day but probably never thought much about. Localhost and 127001. Localhost is not just some random word programmers made up. It's actually a reserved domain name that always points back to your own machine. Think of it like your home address, but for your computer. No matter where you are in the world, when you type localhost, you are talking to yourself. Well, digitally, of course. And guess what? Every machine has its own localhost. So if John on his laptop and Jane on her desktop both type localhost, they are each accessing their own devices without interfering with each other. To truly understand localhost, let's take a step back and see how a website actually loads. You type google.com into your browser and your system checks the DNS or the domain name system to translate google.com into an IP address. And that IP address leads you to Google server and your request is processed. But when you type localhost, your computer skips all that nonsense. It doesn't go to the DNS. It already knows that localhost means right here and directly routes the request to itself. Localhost is just a fancy name for 127.0.0.1. When you type localhost, your computer does not query an external DNS server. Instead, it looks at its host file, located at etc host on Linux and Mac and under drivers etc host on Windows. So in this file, there's an entry like this. This means that localhost is simply mapped to 127001 by the operating system itself. On the other hand, 127001 is already a predefined IP address that directly references the loopback interface. No lookup is required. It just works because the system understands that any request to 127001 should never leave your machine. Now, the loopback interface is a virtual network interface that sends data right back to the same device. It's like throwing a tennis ball against a wall and it bounces right back to you. In fact, the entire 127008 range is reserved for loopback. That means 127002, 003, and even 255 all point to your machine. But in practice, 127001 is the standard. In short, 127001 is a hard-coded loopback IP always understood by your system. And localhost is a name that gets mapped to 127.0.0.1 via the host file. Now, if you modify your host file to map bitemark to 127.0.0.1, then typing bitemark in your browser or terminal will work just like localhost. It will resolve 127.0.0.1 and use the loopback interface. So to modify, open your host file. In Windows, you can open it under driver etc host. In Linux and Mac OS, you can open your terminal and run sudo nano etc host. You then modify the file to add this entry and save the file and exit. So now, when you open a terminal and type ping bitemark, you should see the responses from 127001. And if you're running a local web server, it will behave exactly like localhost 3000. One fun hack, if you want, you can map multiple names to 127001. So in this case, all three names now will work as localhost alternatives. And here is why localhost matters. For developers, it lets you test applications before going live. You can run a local web server, test APIs or debug without needing an internet connection. It can be also used for security because requests to localhost never leave your machine, making it safe for testing sensitive applications. You may also use localhost for networking efficiency. The loopback interface processes requests super fast because there is no external routing. And we can check it out in a Java or a Python code example. Here, this program fetches the machine's hostname and IP address, which is usually 127001. And here in this Python file, this confirms that localhost is actually 127001. In case of JavaScript, the dns.lookup function asks the operating system to resolve localhost. The family parameter in the callback indicates whether the result is IPv4 
or IPv6. Some systems like newer macOS versions default localhost to IPv6 instead of IPv4. The reason why JavaScript explicitly detects whether localhost resolves to IPv4 or IPv6 is because localhost can resolve to either 127.0.0.1 IPv4 or colon colon 1 which is IPv6 depending on the system and its network configuration. But why does the internet need IPv4 and IPv6? Both IPv4 and IPv6 are addressing systems that identify devices on a network. Every device connected to a network needs a unique address to communicate. Back when IPv4 was designed in the 1980s, no one imagined we will have billions of devices connected to the internet. Smartphones, IoT gadgets, smart fridges, even cars. But IPv4 only supports 4.3 billion unique addresses and we ran out. IPv6 solves this problem by providing 340 undecillion addresses, ensuring every device can have its own unique IP address without NAT or network address translation. And here is an example of IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. You can also check how localhost resolves on your system using ping. So in my case here, I see responses from 127.0.0.1, meaning my system is using IPv4. If you get a response from colon colon 1, then your system is using IPv6 for localhost. Otherwise, you will get an unknown host like I am. Now in our previous Java and Python example, you might have noticed the result to IPv4 by default. It's because Java's inet address.getLocalhost and Python's socket.getHostName rely directly on the operating system's built-in name resolution mechanisms. The OS resolves localhost based on its settings typically using IPv4 or 127.0.0.1 by default. If the OS is configured to prefer IPv6, then localhost might resolve to colon colon 1. But most systems still prioritize IPv4. They don't explicitly check for IPv4 or IPv6. They just return whatever the OS gives them. So if you want Java or Python to explicitly check whether localhost resolves to IPv4 or IPv6, you can do something like this. You need to query all IPs like inet address.get all by name in Java or socket.get address info in Python. So while Java and Python just trust the OS, JavaScript double checks everything, which is why it behaves differently. Now, every device connected to a network, whether it's your home Wi-Fi, a corporate LAN, or the global internet, needs an IP address to communicate. These addresses fall into two major categories, private IP addresses and public IP addresses. A public IP is a globally unique IP and assigned by the internet service provider or ISP to allow communication over the internet. And here are a few examples of public IPs. 8.8.8.8 is Google's public DNS. So when you visit google.com, your browser connects to Google's public IP address through the internet. A private IP is used only inside a local network, like your home or office. Private IPs are not accessible from the internet directly. So in your home, your Wi-Fi router might have 192.168.1.1 and your laptop or phone might get 192.168.1.100. Localhost is neither a private nor a public IP. It's a loopback address. Unlike private IPs, localhost never leaves your machine. And unlike public IPs, localhost is not assigned by an ISP. It belongs to the special 127.x.x.x range, which is reserved for loopback testing. Whether you are a developer testing an app, a security expert analyzing network traffic, or just someone curious about how the internet works, localhost and 127.0.0.1 are always there, looping your request right back to you. So next time you see HTTP localhost 3000 on your browser, you'll know exactly what's going on under the hood. That's all for now, but before you go, smash that like button and subscribe for more deep dive videos into tech.